Kelly, this week we have been sharing stories about dating, love, and sex. And today we focus on what may be the ultimate relationship betrayal, cheating. It's not new, but with the rise of social media, there are all kinds of new ways to cheat. Have you heard of micro-cheating, for example? We're going to get to that later. But if you have been the victim of cheating, can you take that pain and become a stronger, better person? That is where we begin, with the story of Jen Waite. Just days after Jen delivered her daughter, she learned that her seemingly perfect husband was actually leading a double life. When I was 25, uh, living in New York, I was working at a restaurant and um, one of the bartenders, I just remember one night, we were both working there, he looked at me and just said my name and it was like a tractor beam. Like from that night on, I had butterflies every time I saw him and really felt that I was in love almost immediately. He also had been living um, in New York illegally. Kind of a big part of the story is that we got married and he was able to get his green card. I was helping the love of my life um, fulfill his dreams and he could finally travel, he could finally go home. I got pregnant shortly after that and gave birth, thinking that I'm married to the absolute love of my life. I really felt kind of cocky, like, oh, I got everything. And about three weeks after she was born, uh, it was the first time that I was opening my computer. My husband's email was on the screen and I could see that the subject was apartments, just one line, and it said, thank you for your time last week, but my girlfriend and I have decided to go with another apartment. And I laughed, like I actually remember laughing um, at the time and in my head thinking, why is he calling me his girlfriend? Like, that's weird, I'm his wife. But also at the same time, I felt really sick. I basically went down this rabbit hole of trying to figure out what was real, what wasn't real, who was he? And it was a few months of discovering kind of lie after lie. So eventually I left. My parents pretty much said, you're coming home with us with, you know, my baby. And we all at the same time got text messages from my husband um, saying, I am going to end my life. Jen Waite joins me now. She is the author of A Beautiful, Terrible Thing, a memoir of marriage and betrayal. Jen, great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So this is incredibly raw, incredibly real, and revealing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that jumps out at me is how incredibly charming he was when you got together. I mean, it was like a love bomb. Yes, um, he was incredibly charming. I mean, that's one of the first things that I think of when I think about the start of our relationship. It was constant attention, constant flattery. Like you said, it's, it's actually called love bombing. Um, just a, a, a constant dosing of that praise all the time and just so charming. And it really felt like to me, you know, maybe as cliche as it sounds, that I was living the like romantic comedy fairy tale romance. Mm -hmm. And I really thought to myself, oh, this is this is what love feels like. And I'd... you didn't rush right into it. You dated him for three years before you got married. Mm -hmm. Well, we dated for about uh, two years before we had our city hall wedding and yeah. then so that he could start his green card application. And then we had um, a bigger reception in Maine. So it was a while. I mean, mm -hmm. like it wasn't like overnight. No, no. So the first clue you had that anything was wrong was that email right after you gave birth to your child. Yes, yep. And. Tell the audience what he said to you when you confronted him with the email about, mm -hmm. you know, the girlfriend and apartment shopping. Yeah, well, so I immediately, like, I, like I said, I, I called him immediately at work and, and kind of confronted him and, and what is this? Is something's wrong. And he just had the most genuine response. I mean, it was laughter. Like, oh, baby, you're gonna, you're gonna think this is so crazy, so silly. Um, and just his, his explanation was, very convincing uh, that a young coworker had needed his help getting an apartment, um, that no one would take her seriously. So she had cried in his office and begged him to call the broker and, you know, say, I'm, I'm your, this person's boyfriend. Can you show her apartments? And so. And you trust him at this point. So you're, you're either buying it or wanting to buy exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it, it was, he was my best friend, the, someone that I loved, someone that I did trust. And so I, I believed him and he came home and I said, you know, this, this still, we need to talk about this. It's very inappropriate. And he said, well, you know, that email was not a big deal, but the bigger deal, and then everything changed. I mean, it, it's 
his eyes changed, his body language changed, um, everything changed. There was nothing behind his eyes, and he said, the bigger problem is that I'm sick. I'm very sick, and I have been sick for your entire pregnancy, but I haven't told you because I didn't want to stress you out. Um, and I haven't been to a doctor. I don't know what's wrong with me, but there's something very wrong with me. And so I immediately went from being angry um, and, you know, mad to wanting to, to figure out what was wrong with my partner, my husband, um, which was quite brilliant on his part because it completely changed the narrative. Um, it made him the victim. Mm, exactly. And, and he told you that he had no feelings for you. He said, I'm looking at you right now and I feel nothing. And it, and it was like this, like this panic um, and dread. And I think I was also having anxiety from being a new mom. I, baby was about three weeks old at that point. And I just remember sitting there and like tears streaming down my face, but just feeling panicked and, and f feeling like I have to help. I have to help my husband. He began insulting you, um, your, your appearance, mm -hmm. you know, your, your grooming, as we say, mm -hmm. which is, doesn't tend to be perfect when you've just given birth to a baby. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you were in denial, I think it's safe to say, from, from you know, reading your story. Yep. But these Absolutely. things have a way of making you believe. Mm -hmm. So you do some investigation, mm -hmm. and you find um, first that he's been taking trips to this other woman's house in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. that he's been making calls to this other woman, mm -hmm. uh, the same woman. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you called the broker mm -hmm. who had actually taken them through the apartment. Yes. And that person had mercy on you. Yes, yes. I was actually extremely surprised. I, I, I emailed him, basically, um, because I remembered, I remembered his name. That email was seared into my mind, and I emailed him and kind of told him the story and attached some pictures of me and my ex-husband. And he called about 10 minutes later, and it was shocking. I, you know, New York broker, I didn't expect to ever hear from him. I didn't think that he'd want to get tangled up in that. And so he said... I showed, yes, I showed your husband and his girlfriend. They were very affectionate, you know, happy couple, a couple of apartments. Um, and so at that point, I mean, I knew before then, but at that point, I really did have to accept, okay, you know, my husband is not who I thought he was. My whole life with him is not what I thought it was. You ultimately found out that she, of course, was not the only one, that there were multiple women. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. and, and I know that you feel right now like this was a predator that you were married to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you've used the word sociopath. Mm -hmm. you, you believe that about mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. That's, of course, a, like a clinical term of art. We, yes. We actually, she refers to him as Marco in the book. That's not his real name. Mm -hmm. Um, we called in a doctor who can help us understand this. Um, with us now is Dr. Romani uh, Dervasula. And just help us understand, because she writes in the book, he was charming, mm -hmm. impulsive, mm -hmm. had no remorse ultimately for what he did, lied that he was poetic in the way he would compliment her and was incapable of a sincere apology. I mean, like, you textbook. Tell, it's textbook. Textbook. I mean, it's textbook. And it's so painful to hear because you had enough good stuff to work with that you knit together a story that you could rationalize. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I almost don't want to say you were in denial because what felt real felt real. Mm -hmm. And then little by little when the bad stuff comes in, it's easy to sort of talk yourself out of it. Mm -hmm. But that pattern of being charming, lying, manipulating, cheating, uh, gaslighting, where he was actually manipulating your reality, mm -hmm. and then saying, I have no feeling for you, that does fall under what we call Because he wouldn't admit it. You know, the book yeah. goes through how he, you came back to him time and time and said, I have this, I have this. Mm -hmm. And you felt on an inherent level there's something yeah. wrong with him if he's, yep. if he's going to this level to mm -hmm. lie about it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are a lot of men out there who cheat or women out there who cheat right. who will lie right. when confronted. Right. So, I mean, how do you know the difference between... I, my husband has cheated, my wife has cheated, and I am married to a sociopath. I'll give mm -hmm. that one to you. First of all, you got to trust yourself. When the dots don't connect, they don't connect. Mm -hmm. And when you find yourself telling a story over it, you're probably telling the wrong mm -hmm. story. I hate to say that. Part of it is also what's tough with a sociopath is they're so good at lying. When the rest of us lie, you can tell. Mm -hmm. Our eyes get wide and we're a little bit jittery. Yeah. But when a sociopath lies, they're so calm. And in fact, you feel guilty 
for having accused them. So you want, and that's the most dangerous part of this kind of a story because they're expert liars. So that's where you have to trust your gut and say, this doesn't feel right. That broker was an angel. He I was wish an angel. everyone had someone like that. I, I felt the same when I read the book. I wanted to stand and yeah. cheer for the broker. Yeah. It was like, just mercy, just mercy. You I, know? I cried. So many people would have said, I'm not going to get involved. Mm -hmm. But he helped mm -hmm. you. I, I know you feel conned. You know, that he, he mirrored you. He did the things that, that these kinds of men do to try to reel you in. Yep. And wasn't faithful. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of it all, is there, does he have any presence now in your life? You, you're divorced. In your life, your daughter's life. And what's your takeaway on it? No, I mean, he has, we've had basically no contact for about three years. Um, so pretty much six months um, out from when I found out, we have had no contact. Um, and, you know, when the broker called, I really cried tears of joy because I was just so happy to finally know the truth mm -hmm. and start rebuilding my reality. Um, and this whole experience has been, for me, almost like a rebirth, um, rebuilding my sense of self, um, you know, my self-worth, my boundaries, all of these things that somehow I lost along the way that I think a lot of us do for whatever million and one reasons through, you know, adolescence or puberty, um, we begin to have these false beliefs or coping mechanisms and they serve us potentially uh, and then they no longer serve us. And I, this experience allowed me to completely kind of shake those away. They crumbled, it was terrifying, but I was able to rebuild everything from the ground up based on empirical data, truths that I actually believe in. So, I, yeah, I can't say that I regret it because it really ended up being a, a transformative experience for me. And, mm -hmm. and shined the light on what was real. Exactly. And, and what wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, I understand he doesn't have anything to do with your daughter now. No. And that, and that may be a blessing. That is such a blessing. I receive hundreds of messages now from women who are co-parenting with similar um, personality types. And I... I count myself very lucky that he uh, vanished. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I love to read about how supportive your parents were, and yes. God bless them, too, for all the love they gave to you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling this story. <laughs> we did reach out to Marco for comment. We did not hear back. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there, and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.